And we'll start with Najee Harris and ETN going in the second round. Javante Williams, Mr. Gainwell. So, Michael Carter. All right, we got Chubba Hubbard, Jared Dokes. Talk about a Trace Simon, brother. Let's go to Elijah Mitchell. So I was looking at JV and Hawkins here. Put you on the spot, dude. Yeah. Ratatata, ratatata, ratatata. Welcome to the AVG Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm the host with the most. My name is Michael Marcanio. I'm here with Tyler Ravellis and Andre Navarro. Tyler is also known as the Ya Boy T. Andre Navarro is also known as Jerry Curls. Yep, yep, yep. Just kidding. For the girls. For the girls Jerry yep. Curls for the girls. <laughs> Maybe it. get them. Get your curls wet and maybe the <laughs> girls as well. Yes, the toes. <laughs> uh, we're talking nice. fantasy football, guys. This is season four, episode one. How does that feel? Season yeah. four, man. I mean, I know. we're just trucking along we're, over here. We're not new to this. We're true to this. We're finally figuring out algorithms. We're, we're making our way. Making our way downtown to uh, getting people to check us out and helping you win your fantasy. do 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 uh, but today, so today we are talking about rookie running backs. Um, these are this is going to be more of like a dynasty type deal, but it's going to give you that extra information going into the 2021 fantasy football season, and it's going to be able to give you uh, everything you need to know and give you the cutting edge. I know we're kind of early, we're still in the off season, but if you start doing all this research now, you clicked on this video or you uh, are listening to this podcast, so you, you're you're making the first step to uh achieving that fantasy football championship this year that's right that's, that's right, right that's baby that's right. uh so yeah tune in we got some sweet information for you guys and uh yeah let's just get into it baby you're kind of like a side note here uh si sign up or if you want oh, yeah. if you want to buy the avg moon token in cryptocurrency <laughs> i did not think uh, that's what you guys said <laughs> it's sponsored by elon musk and we're going to the moon so uh, avg moon token cryptocurrency don't don't get left behind you know you want to yeah, go to the moon you want to go to the moon get the avg token <laughs> hey real talk i was talking to my buddy about that and uh like i said side note he was telling how you know it doesn't take much to make a cryptocurrency nowadays i've been on a mean cryptocurrency uh binger, yeah. binger so yeah you just bear, bear with me here yeah and everyone else right uh, but I was telling him, I was joking around. I was like, yeah, AVG token, you know, yeah. for fantasy. And he was like, bro, that's a, that's actually a good idea. Like, you should make like a like like a fantasy football cryptocurrency Ooh. to where that's how you can like pay your your Whoa. for your fantasy leagues. Or if you want to do like side bets or whatever, that would be kind of be like how you're doing it instead of. That would be good for actually. Yeah. Like that, so. Okay. No one steal that idea. Yeah. Can we call it Cryptcoin? Cryptcoin? Yeah. No. Whatever. Cryptcoin. Yeah. Crip coin. Bad idea alert. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but yeah, that was just my little. Uh, but I thought you were going to talk about the Patreon. So we, we did start oh, yeah. a Patreon. Yeah, that's so, true. Yeah. so if you want to support us. Yeah, you can use the AVG token on Patreon. Yeah. So if you want to, we'll give you extra information uh, through the AVG um, Patreon. Uh, so you, you, all the uh, benefits are on there. The link is down below, whether you're listening to audio or if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, but yeah, check that out too as well. Uh, but let's freaking Look jump into it, baby. Freaking do it, dude. Zing. Zing. All right, yeah, like Mike said right here, we're going to go over some of the rookie running backs. Uh, you know, some of these are for dynasty purposes. If you're in a dynasty league, you maybe got your dynasty draft coming up. But then there's also some running backs that you should be targeting in your redraft leagues as well. So we're just going to go through these. I uh, asked the Messiah. A.K.A. Andre Navarro to give me a list of the running backs that he liked. And uh, we got 10 here, so we're going to go through these. Uh, pretty much just going to go with the the big three, I guess you could call them. Yeah, right? for sure. And we'll start with Najee Harris, and after that we'll go through the other guys who got drafted. And probably a lot of guys that you maybe not even heard of, but these are the names that we think that you should you know keep an eye on because um, they be, could be important to yeah. you in your fantasy success. Some draft steals. We'll start with uh, your guy, Mike Najee Harris. Yeah, I'm I'm really hyped about Najee Harris. I know that you know I, I'm curious as to what you guys think. Uh, I mean, first, maybe y'all. I mean, it's a perfect landing spot. I mean, they needed a running back. It's funny how I don't remember the last time everyone's like, 
this dude needs to go to the Steelers. Like, yeah, experts, regular people, fantasy, you know, fanatics, football fanatics are like, he's like the perfect fit. I mean, and they got him. I mean, it's what else? Could, what else could you want more than a running back that a team was trying to get the whole time? I mean, they could have gotten other picks. There, he was the second running back, right? First, 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 running, first running back running taken. Back, there yeah. was only two in the first round. So, I mean, fuck, why not? He's going to get a lot of touches. I mean, he's got the easiest path to what? At least 200 carries. They don't have. I mean, Anthony yeah. McFarland. I know we liked him last year, but this dude's going to get the rock. Yeah, they're they, and. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Tyler. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, you, you don't waste a first-round draft pick uh, on a guy if you don't plan on using him. I mean, obviously, you have Benny Snell still there. James Conner, he's in Arizona now with the Cardinals. But, I mean, yeah, you waste – I don't say waste. You spend a first-round yeah. pick on a guy like Najee Harris. And, you know, he could be a three-down back. I mean, the guy had 43 receptions last year. So, he's a guy that can be utilized out of the backfield. And you just see right there on the highlights right there. I mean, the guy's agile. Uh, for being as big as he is, he's six two, two thirty, and he just jumped over a guy with ease. Easy. Yeah. He's like a like a ath- more athletic Derrick Henry. Yeah. He's big, not two fifty, two forty, what two forty five big, but not easy to bring down. Yeah. And then I was just looking at some stats. You know, last year the Steelers they threw the most in the NFL. They were throwing the ball forty two times awful. per game, and you just can't do that. Uh, in terms of how much they ran the ball, they were ranked thirtieth out of the thirty two teams. So that's not good. They were not running the ball. And I think I was telling you this, Mike, off air. Um, uh, the tackle for the or the Steelers. Well, now he's on the Ravens, but uh, Alejandro Villanueva. Oh, okay. They were asking him, like, how, how yeah. you know, how did you feel playing with that kind of offense, where you know Big Ben's dropping back 40, 50 times a game? And he, he said it was like terrible because it's so much easier for a lineman to, you Move. know, when you're run, yeah, when you're running the ball, you're running forward and you're just trying to like bulldoze yeah bulldoze the person in front of you instead of dropping back 40 50 times a game and you have to kind of like create this pocket for big ben to throw the pass so um yeah and you're more on the defensive you're more like yeah well, i mean literally you are you... yeah so i mean we'll see uh if they kind of switch away from that because i can't imagine with big ben being 40 something years old i don't even know how old he is but yeah. he's definitely getting on the he's tail old. end of his career i mean they can't have him throwing the ball 40 50 no. times a game if they want to be successful especially with how good that defense is i mean i know they lost bud dupree but that defense is still going to be one of the the top tier defenses in he's, the nfl the thing the thing too uh, like i know everybody's on Najee harris i think it's just all three of us are kind of on the same page as like like believe it's i think it's going to be good uh when you say like they're the one of the worst ranked running teams um the thing is is that What's it called? That's not going to happen again. We got a new offensive coordinator. Yeah. Um, we, we did address the O-line because we did lose a center and a guard. So it's like the, w- there was some guys drafted, multiple, I think two or three linemen, offensive linemen that were drafted. So um, it's going – and they're going to run the ball more with the new offensive coordinator. For it's sure. just yeah. it's just not going to be – you know, the Steelers are – that was like a, a fluke season. I've never seen the Steelers play like that. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, they, they no never balance. play like that. Like teams, even teams knew what they were doing. They were like, they're going to pass. They're yeah. going to pass. Yeah. And the like, thing they're going to pass. Yeah. And Ben couldn't hold on to the ball. So it was a nightmare. But I think there's, uh, as far as running um, the ball, I think it's going to be just be much better this yeah. upcoming season. So Yeah. So Najee pipe, Harris, pipe, pipe. he's going to be one of those guys where you're definitely drafted him in Dynasty, obviously. Yeah. He uh, was our 1-1 one, one easy. The draft started, I think, at like <clears throat> 9 a.m. by like 9.04 yeah, instantly, the guy had and he had, auto, he had eight pick. hours. Yeah, he was like Najee Harris, yeah. number one overall. And then in redraft leagues, I think I saw it's still so third early. Uh, he was going in like the third round. So yeah, that's what I was going to ask. That could actually move up into like the second round. I think once we get closer to the actual draft season. Well, you know, hype season uh-huh. too. Once they yeah. combine the the training camps. Yeah. yeah. Once once all these amateur podcasts start talking about them, yeah, we're already like, in we're in already there. in it. You know what I mean? So yeah. But. So he'll be a guy that's uh, <laughs> for show. He'll well, definitely be getting drafted pretty high. And my thing, too, is if the Steelers want to extend Big Ben, because he still has some juice. Like, he can still throw it. Why would you want him to throw the ball 45 times? Like, if you yeah. want him to play longer, fucking do some play action. Let, let him pass the ball 20 times, 25 times in a game and, and hand I'm the sure, ball off. I'm sure Ben didn't like that. It was just the, no. that they had Randy Fitchner and they just wanted to just – I think it was like, oh, no, hey, guys, like, th- this is going to work. Watch. And they just were like, all right, bro, if it doesn't, like, you're out of here. And they let him do his thing, that offensive coordinator, and then they were like, okay, we're not doing that shit again. Yeah. I know I know the they got the Maryland offensive coordinator. He likes to use a running back a lot, like screen passes. He likes to get it in their hands, get them in space. So I did like that for McFarland, but 
I would be stupid to think they weren't going to get Najee Harris. So they did. For sure, Burn. yeah. So we can move next. on to the next one here. Yep, young stud. This one hurt a lot of people, maybe dynasty owners. Yeah, just kind of surprising this one. I mean, you get Najee Harris going. I mean, all like all the mock drafts, and I said it before us, I hate mock drafts because they're, they're, they're so wrong. You know, outside of like the first couple of picks, I feel like they're they're pretty spot on. But after that, it's it's a crap shoot. You just never know what's gonna happen. You know, most people had Najee Harris going as the only running back in the first round, ETN going in the second round. Uh, I'm not sure if, uh, I mean, I think a lot of people were su- were surprised that the Jaguars drafted ETN in the back end of the first round. But I like this pick for them personally. I mean, you know, it's especially great. you're rebuilding, great. you get Urban Meyer, and what better way to kind of solidify your offense or get a good nucleus of the offense going forward? You draft Trevor Lawrence, and then later on in the first round, you draft his teammate, Travis ETN. Um, Travis and Trevor. G- good core right there, I feel like, to build around. Yeah. I I forget who. It was somebody on NFL Network. They're the only one that I saw had him pairing them together, and I was like, that would be dope. Yeah. But, yeah, he's uh, – I read that Urban Meyer's lining him up in the slot. You saw those reports, Adam. I think it was, like, at a sleeper. They're saying he started rookie minicamp taking slot receiver reps. But I think long-term, I, I honestly think this hurts more James Robinson because – I mean, let's just be realistic. Once you get into training camp and they're all out there and James Robinson runs something and then Travis Etienne runs something, they're going to be like, damn. No, for sure, yeah. Like, James Robinson went undrafted for a reason. Great, great season. Not not to take anything away, but yeah. there's a reason he went undrafted and there's a reason this guy right here went in the first. And that I think that's going to show sooner than later. I'm not saying James – like, fade James Robinson completely, but I'm not, I'm not messing with James Ro- – I'm not taking James Robinson as an RB1 – I think he could lose his job by – this could be like a Jordan Howard where he, it's gone after like six weeks. If he, if he yeah. gets, if, I think if he gets hurt and he balls – I mean, Urban Meyer, none of us really know what he's going to do. He's, I think he's a wild card, but talent-wise, he's – I think he's got James Robinson beat. Yeah, I wrote down in my notes here, Travis Etienne, he's so fast he makes other people look not fast. Not fast. I mean, guy ran a 4-4-40. Uh, just to kind of put that in perspective, Tyreek Hill runs a 4-3. So uh, – he fast. He fast. He's fast. Uh, for me, it's it's tricky. Like I don't know if I'll be touching Travis Etienne in any redraft leagues because I think James Robinson did do so well and he, he kind of earned his he kind of earned like his chops and his playing time in a sense. I think this yeah. will be a full blown running back by committee here. Maybe even could, could even be like a hot hand type of approach. Um, I was reading some things saying that he wants to use him. I don't know if he said it. My, my bad if I'm repeating you, but um, that he kind of wants to use him kind of like a Percy Harvin type of player. So, like I said, out of the slot, can, can do some jet sweeps. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some uh, some formations where like end James Robinson's in the back. You got ETN on, in the slot, and they do the jet sweeps around the corner, stuff like that. So, But, I mean, in terms of dynasty, like you said, I think the talent will prevail. And James Robinson undrafted this guy. You know, you're spending a first-round draft pick on somebody. You're going to use You're planning on using that guy, and he's definitely in store for the future. Uh, in your dynasty draft, where did he go? Three. What one three. One three. Okay. One three. And yeah, he's So he's gonna be like a consensus top five guy, pretty much. Yeah. And yeah. then here's my question. Redraft, I feel like he's one of those he's like a Tony Pollard. He's gonna be one of those handcuffs that gets drafted. He's gonna get drafted. For sure, yeah. Like he's gonna go. It's just a matter of where. You know what I mean? Because the minute the minute James Robinson goes down, he's he's gonna be the guy. Yeah. And he's got trust. Him and, like you said, even on, like, pass protection, he has – him and Trevor Lawrence are, you know, they've been teammates for three years. So they've grown together. I think it's a great move to have them drafted together. So, yeah, I think he's a high-end handcuff in redraft. Dynasty, I mean, it's going to take a top three pick. So if you're out of the top three and you want him, just be ready to give up top three type yeah. talent or or some form of picks put together, whatever. But yeah. he ain't sliding out of three. My guy's fast, though. Very good. Yeah, and that's in single QB leagues. In double QB leagues, the QBs always go first. So that's only for one QB dynasty. In PPR leagues, it looks like he's going – he's moved up, but he was like 10-10. Now he's around 10-5. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, he'll probably go like in those later rounds. Like yeah, I said, like once he gets closer, 14. he might creep up. But if, um, if you're in a keeper league, great person to try to draft on the back end and keep him, like the yeah. league that we're in, because it might, it might take him some time. So. Yeah. You guys want to move on to the next one? Dude, I don't want to, but we're going to do it. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> I was kidding. Going on to Javante Williams. Javante Williams going. Th- this screws up the Melvin Gordon thing, huh? No, I mean, Javante Pookie Williams 
of course everyone's a pookie right so is a pookie or booby that's what everyone is nowadays but yeah he uh led the nation in missed tackles but he was 20th in uh total carries which is which is crazy. I did see a stat. He was PFFs. He had the highest rate for a running back in college since they started handing ratings out. So higher than anybody ever. It's like a 96.5, something stupid like that. For his pro football focus grade? Yeah, pro. It's the highest. He, he's got the highest grade ever of any running back. Yeah. Dude's a monster. I mean, he weighs 220. He split carries with Michael Carter. He fucking ran for 1,100 yards, 19 touchdowns. Had 25 catches for 300 yards and three more touchdowns. He went to a good spot with the Broncos, who really don't have an offense figured out. Melvin Gordon's leaving after this year. I don't see them paying him again. I, I mean, dude, dude's real. He's built for the NFL. He's got the size. And I was telling T uh, before we we went on air. They said uh, that he's just all about school. He four point six GPA, valedictorian, and dude just loves football. Is always early, and I guess they said he has a. He has a he takes pride in his name, so he doesn't ever want to fuck it up. So he's, you know, real deal. Yeah, I he, wish I would have known that not, sooner. He's not uh, doing dances he on top of like Honda Accords while he's supposed to be yeah. at. I mean, yeah, his, his coach said death, taxes, and Javante showing up to class are the three certainties in life. That's what he said. His coach. The, the fourth crazy. one would be if you get in his way, he's gonna truck you. Yeah, he yeah. That's what I wrote down. This guy's a human truck stick. I mean, honestly, he's. Kind of like, you know, he's the last one of the, the big three, Najee Harris, but man. Uh, ETN, and Javante Williams. But he might be my favorite out of the three, to be honest with you, yeah. just with how physical he is and how hard he's to bring down. But, I mean, at the same time, the guy can run through you, but, you know, he's, he's agile, too, for his, for how big he is. Like you said, 5'10", 220. Um, I mean, like you said, Melvin Gordon's there this year, but, I mean, how many times has Melvin Gordon stayed healthy for a full year? I can Never. tell you because I wrote it down. Zero. One time in his six NFL seasons, Melvin Gordon's played all 16 And it was games. probably his rookie so, year when he didn't score a touchdown. So <laughs> you got to think, too, obviously in Dynasty Leagues, like you said, this guy's going consensus top five overall. Yeah. Uh, but in redraft leagues, I, I'm going to be targeting this guy in every Eight single draft I can just because of the fact, like you said, Melvin Gordon last year in his contract, you know, and then the guy's not the model of consistent health. So no. if, if anything was to happen to Melvin Gordon, I think you would have a bell cow in Javante Williams. Yeah. He's a league winner for sure. Yeah. I think. Yeah, one of my favorite so running backs in this even, draft class. Even in uh, redraft leagues, you, you're liking him as like a spicy oh, last minute round. Bro. He's like, no, back. I think he's like an eighth to tenth round. He could be the highest end handcuff of anyone because Melvin Gordon, especially the Broncos, they're going to need people. They're going to try to grind the clock out, you know, ball control. Shit, excuse me. And this dude could catch. That's like the thing that's like sneaky about him. He averaged, what, 7.3 yards per reception as a, as a running back. But, you know, he did his thing. It was mostly out of the screen game, but, dude, he's just hard to bring down. Yeah. And he's got he got the fresh legs splitting carries with Michael Carter, who we'll talk about later. So I don't see many bad things about him. I mean, dude's got talent. I mean, the way I look at it is like this. If you're drafting Melvin Gordon and people were drafting Philip Lindsay last year, then you need to be drafting this guy because this guy's better than Philip Lindsay. In my opinion, yeah. no, no, no disrespect to Philip Lindsay. I mean, the guys undrafted had back to back thousand yard seasons. I feel like he kind of got disrespected by them getting Melvin Gordon. But and you know when we when we would look at those snap counts, we would see it would almost be a fifty fifty split between Melvin Gordon and Philip Lindsay. I mean, maybe fifty five Melvin Gordon, forty five Philip Lindsay. So I think we can see a similar pattern with that. But like I said, this guy's a a guy where. When they get into the goal line, maybe in the past last year, they would bring in Melvin Gordon for a bigger body where when they get in the goal line, if he's on the field, I mean, this guy arguably can truck anybody better yeah. than Melvin Gordon. So For sure. Yeah, I, mean, I like it. That's the boy. I like it, Javante Williams. So that was the top three, and now we're going to go into more uh, nitty-gritty, would you say? Man, at least for nitty redrafts, nitty. it's nitty-gritty. <laughs> if you're in a dynasty league, you've probably looked at some of these guys. Yeah. But um, All right, let's go into – Mr. Gainwell. Yeah, so going to the Philadelphia Eagles. My favorite running back. Kenneth in this class. Gainwell. By far my favorite. <clears throat> By far. I don't know. I don't even know how long it was. I looked at this dude's film and I was like, this dude is ridiculous. So I got all kinds of shit here. So set out he had like six family members die because of COVID. So Dre, Dre always got that the so, hashtag interesting stats. So that but that's literally why he sat out. He had like three like really close family members. I guess. And then, I mean, that's, that's crazy to think six of them, but he said, uh, his family's like too important to him. So he wanted to be with them. So he sat out. 
but in 2019, my dog was the only player in the country to have a thousand rushing yards and 500 receiving yards out of anybody. Drop my pen. Out of anybody, he averaged 6.3 yards per carry, 12 yards per catch, and averaged three and a half catches per game as a freshman. The film we're watching, uh, the first one was uh, they're playing Tulane. That game against Tulane, he became the first player since 1997 to have 200 receiving yards and 100 rushing yards in one game, which is fucking bananas. As a freshman with uh, Gibson on the team, Antonio Gibson was on the same team as him and didn't get any running back reps. He ran for almost 1,500 yards. I mean, his carry, his fucking contact balance is stupid. He gained 11 pounds um, through the time that he sat out, so he tested at 201 pounds and ran a 4440. Dude had 51 catches on 61 uh, attempts. They said he could have been a day two wide receiver if he just committed to be a wide receiver and instead of a running back. He would have been a day two slot guy. I think he's fucking. I think he's gonna hit. I don't know. He's my favorite running back. If you couldn't tell, I put has to. <laughs> I put he has to beat out Boston Scott and Carry On Johnson under easy money. Easy money. So you think he becomes the premier back there? I, pretty quickly i don't that's not one of those uh i read already that sirianni which was the colts old oc he wants to use him as a naheem hines i almost see like a little Devonte freeman when he came out like low to the ground tough 200 pounds similar build five eight five nine hopefully he has a better career than Devonte freeman even though Devonte freeman's three years were pretty fucking impressive yeah, yeah i was gonna say but um they interviewed him and they said he goes i'm just built different that's what he said. That, so I was like, I don't know. He's a big football guy. I, that almost makes me not want to. All he cares about, I guess, is football. I guess he, like, eat, breathe, sleeps football. Coach said he's, like, first guy in, last guy out. So, yeah, it's my favorite dude in this running back class, Kenny Gainwell. So for, for Dynasty, I think it's a good pick. But the the depth they do have at running back kind of makes me nervous for redraft leagues because, like, yeah. I, I know you're saying Boston Scott and, and Carry on Johnson, Johnson. And they even have Jordan Howard there. I know he's – you call him a ball carrier. Carrier, yeah. I don't even know if he's plunger. that anymore. Now he's just literally. But yeah. you still got Miles Sanders there. It just kind of worries me. Do these veterans for redraft leagues only? Redraft, is what I'm yeah. saying. Do these veterans kind of like just kind of overtake him this year, and then obviously next year going forward, you know, maybe carry maybe carry on doesn't even make the team. Yeah. Like I say, it's early. You still need training camp and all that stuff. So maybe carry on doesn't make the team. Maybe Jordan Howard doesn't make the team. Then I'd feel a little bit more confident in him in redraft leagues. But, yeah, like you were saying earlier, I mean, the guy's a dual threat. I mean, he could run it, catch it. Um, I mean, that's the type of player you love for fantasy yeah. football because you don't, you don't want a guy who's, you know, one-dimensional and, you know, when they, when they need to throw the ball, he's on the sidelines. You know, you want your guy to be able, not leaving the field. For sure. On the three downs. So, I mean, yeah, like what Dre was saying, you know, guy's got some super good talent. I think in Dynasty, where did you, where did you draft him? Because you, you got him in your Dynasty, right? Dude, I almost – if I didn't – it's funny. If I didn't need a quarterback as bad as I did – I would have taken him with the ninth pick in the first round, but I needed one so bad, but I got him with the fourth pick in the second, oh, nice. which is which is crazy. But so you got your cake and you ate it too? Dude, that I, saying I, I got the booty and it was in my face, and she gave me money for it, which nice. is crazy. <laughs> but, no, I think uh, with him – That's a great analogy. I think his versatility – with him, he might not get the carries, but I think he's going to find his way on the field as like a pass catcher, maybe third down, because it's crazy. Miles Sanders had a – he was bad out of the backfield last year after a good rookie year with receptions. Yeah. So I think he's going to try to find a way to get them both because the Eagles really don't have weapons. I mean, you have Rager, Smith. You don't have anybody really proven. They're trying to dish Ertz. You have Miles Sanders. Yeah, Goddard. So, so I think with him, I mean, training camp will dictate a lot, but if I think he's going to make the most of it. And Kenny Gainwell, I feel like that's just a good running back name. I don't know. It's probably because he's my dude, but it could be full of shit. His name, his name is good. It's a good running back name. I mean, it's Kenny Gainwell. He's yeah. gonna he gains he gains well. He doesn't gain not well. You Maybe, know what if he gets fat? Man, he gained well. He's yeah. a cheeseburger Eddie. Uh, do you, you got anything else on that one? Uh no. Nah. So in, in redraft leagues, where are you target him at early? Uh, redraft. Honestly, he's he's one of those guys. If Ray I get Brown Miles, Flyers. if I get Miles Sanders, he's someone I'm looking to get. You know, 15, 16, just as like a because Miles Sanders did get hurt a couple times last yeah, year. Yeah, for sure. So I would look for him as more of like a. I don't believe too much in handcuffs, even though with these guys we have been talking about it. But with him, yeah, for sure. Nice, nice. Uh, let's go on to the next one. Here we got Michael Carter for the New York Jets. The Jets are changing things. Are you are you shaking in your boots as a Dolphins fan, Tyler? 
Well, I don't own any boots, so no. <laughs> He's shaking in his Crocs. Oh, the shaking Jets scared you. From you, you lost. Go ahead, T. What do you think? I think saying. we both like him. I'm. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of another one, like I said, with the Eagles, just having a lot of depth at the running back position. I mean, the Jets, you know, they, they signed Tevin Coleman. Maybe he's kind of at the tail end of his career. Who knows? You know, they have the Michael P. Ryan, who they drafted last year. Ty Johnson actually turned it on a little bit towards the end of the year when he got his opportunity. So he's still on the team as well. So and he's young. So it's kind of like RB3, RB4 on his own team. Um, you know, coming in as a rookie, still got to learn the offense, still got to learn how to be a pro. So, I mean, he, this is like a dynasty guy for me, not really a redraft guy. Um, not the biggest guy, but one thing I can say is might be the shiftiest guy in the draft in terms of the running back position. I mean, out of all the running backs that I looked at, you know, his ability to juke and make someone miss was probably the best out of any of them. Yeah. So I had him very, sh very shifty. And I wrote right here, he, he's only 5'8". So I was like, it's, he's hard to see behind the line. So next thing you know, he's just at the second, third level. And then once he got to the second, third level, like, I mean, he's, he is kind of hard to tackle since he's a smaller, stockier guy. But then he can shake you out of your shoes. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I agree with the especially with the cutback game. The the only one out of this class that I liked more was your boy Trey Sermon. Other than that, he like can just like plant that foot. But his vision of the whole field is really good. <clears throat> like you said, can break a lot of tackles. I had a good stat. He was first in the country, first in the nation pro uh, per Pro Football Focus of yards of fifteen plus. And he was fifth in the nation in missed tackles forced. And he still ran a 4 4 7 40. So, I mean, he, he's still pretty – he's fast. He's super quick. And, I mean, he gets yards in, by the chunk. I mean, I think the Jets for dynasty isn't that bad of a spot because they took him in, what, the third round? Third? Or second? Uh, I can't remember, yeah. And I know it's funny. The Jets drafted two Michael Carters in the same round. Oh, yeah, I saw, saw that. They, yeah, they drafted the safety, too. But I like. Uh, I think they're gonna get him involved. Out of all the guys, I think his pass catching is probably the best. P. Ryan didn't really do much. He was pretty just kind of like hand the ball and he gets you like falls over and gets you three and a half. You know. Was Adam Gase's offense though? So yeah. So actually, another thing you he could take be a superstar. A grain of salt. So yeah, in that case, we'll see what happens. He kind of reminds me of like a scat bat. I, yeah. Scat back. Um, I don't want to say like a Darren Sproles, but. You know, kind of like that guy, you know, a smaller guy who's, you know, he can run the ball and he can catch, but he's like more like a smaller yeah. scat back, like running back by committee guy. So that's kind of what separates him from these other guys who like, you know, ETN could be a three down back, Javante, Najee, those guys could be three down backs. Yeah, just get him in space. Nice. What's the, when, when did he go in your, in your dynasty draft? Two, eight or one, one, eight. One, eight? <laughs> First round, okay. yep. I was going to say, round. yeah, because I would. I wouldn't think he would get out of the second round or he'd be like a high second round pick in the in dynasty. Running backs are at a premium too. Like yeah. They just He's going in the 12, 12 round in PPR drafts right now. Redraft. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, oh shit. Yeah. Let's get it. Who's next dog. All right. We got Chubba Hubbard. Chuba Hubbard. I thought it was Chuba Hubbard until I was watching it. It's Chuba. They do call him Chuba? Chuba. Mm. His old Canadian ass. So, yeah, he's from Canada. I know you know me with random stats. His running backs coach was actually Curtis Martin in high school. He's a pretty good running backs coach. <laughs> he, and he ran track. So, he's really a fast dude who plays football still, they say. He's yeah. kind of raw. But he runs. He's lightning fast. His, you know, his stock went down this year. He's, he decided to come back after running for 2,000 yards. And then you saw he got into it with his coach with the whole – you know BLM shit. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, they yeah. like had to go on TV and like shake hands and shit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so for sure. just a bad look for him. He was definitely not going to go in the fifth round like he did in real life to the Panthers. He was going top two rounds, top th or top three at the worst. Yeah. But I mean, did run for two thousand yards. First guy since Barry Sanders to do that at Oak State. Straight line speed. His pass protection's iffy, which is why not even iffy. It's actually dog shit. But he goes to the Panthers. You know, behind. Christian McCaffrey, who did just get hurt. I mean, what do you think for landing spot wise? Just landing spot alone. Yeah, landing spot probably not the best for a guy. You know, if you're gonna draft him in redraft leagues. I mean, in redraft leagues, like you said, he went to the Panthers. So if I'm gonna redraft league and I get Christian McCaffrey, I want Chuba Hubbard. I want to say Chuba so hard, but uh, Chuba Hubbard. I'm getting him as my handcuff if I have Christian McCaffrey. I mean, you got to think Christian McCaffrey in 2019 when he was the RB one, he had over 400 touches, and I don't want to say where. You know, you're getting the, the tread on the tires wear out or the, the body's breaking down. But, I mean, that's Damn. a lot of touches. And we did see him get hurt not once but twice throughout the season. So, 
could there be a correlation? Maybe, maybe not. So, I mean, I just want to have a guy like Chubba Hubbard or Chuba Hubbard. Whatever. Say Chubba. Yeah, Chubba Chuba. Or Chubba Chuba. Uh, Chuba Hubbard. It's a handcuff, uh, Chris McCaffrey. But, I mean, I, I liked what I saw in the film. I mean, like yeah. I said, the guy's got sprinter speed. I mean, he if he gets a, ga- a, a hole, he's gone. gone. Like, there's even like, even like the tiniest little crease, he's gone. It's he's like, He is outrunning everybody on the field. Yeah. It's almost like Jonathan Taylor last year. Like he's not gonna juke you. He's not shifty like Michael Carter at all. Yeah. But like the minute he gets that seam, he's just you're good. Don't even chase him. He's you're not catching him. Yeah. He's got some sneaky elusiveness. I felt like he he did have the a good ability to like read the hole and kind of you know read where the direction and where everything was going. But like I said, his receiving upside was non-existent. So he's not gonna be a three down back. Uh, but I mean, the guy's straight line speed was was impressive. I mean, he's probably. I mean, I would love, you know, ETN might be, have been the fastest, but I mean, I think it said right here that they, they had clocked, a four two they nine. clocked him at a four three six at his pro day, which is just ridiculous. They had him at a four two nine last year. Last year, dude, he would have in our in our dynasty, he was going top six if he would have yeah. come out. Like, oh, I would have taken him over Cam Akers, <clears throat> which is crazy to think. But with him, I think it's going to come down to how much does he love football? Because if he does. He'll gain the weight. He'll learn how to catch. He'll put in that work. Learn how to pass pro, like you said. Yeah. If he can do that, he's going to be a stud because he weighs 208 right now. So you can, if you can get him up to 215, he's got the weight to be every down back. He's fast. If He just has to put in the work with, yeah. with him because he could be a boss. Yeah. He could be the reason they get rid of McCaffrey. They're not trying to pay him $600 million, trillion. Or did they already do that? They already did that. Oh, well, again. <laughs> um, but like I said, if the, he stays behind McCaffrey a couple years and then maybe, you know, his rookie deal ends and he goes somewhere else potentially. And then obviously you're sitting behind McCaffrey for a couple years. Just you, you, you have fresh legs. Yeah. So, I mean, this guy could be someone we're talking about for three, four or five years from yeah. now as just being a stud. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I liked what I saw on film. Like I said, he, sneaky, elusive, and then the, just the straight line speed of, hey, there's a hole and he could hit it. I mean, you see it right there. He's just running by everybody. Uh, yeah. You can't teach that. Yeah. No. Um, right. what, yeah. Did, where did he go in your dynasty? I don't know how. My boy Chris got him at fucking two, six. Yeah. So well, I go, think going in the second round. What it was. What are you in a 10 or 12, man? 12. 12, man. What it so. is is there's so many wide receivers. This this draft had so many wide outs, which we'll talk about on another episode. It was it was honestly, this draft was deeper than last year's. That had Jefferson and Higgins and Lamb and – and who else? I mean, those are the, I mean, three big guys. But, but yeah, a lot of good guys last year. Mims, Rugs, Judy. Yeah. He's also going in like the twelfth round. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if McCaffrey gets hurt, fire him up. Yeah, I think I think if you have McCaffrey, you have to aim to get this guy in the later rounds. You don't want to have deja vu again. You know where you draft McCaffrey, and you wish you would have had Mike Davis because I mean we saw what Mike Davis was able to do in that offense with Matt Rule. So I'm not saying it was a nightmare. Say you had CMC, and then you ended up having to play against Mike Davis. Like when you did it, yeah, probably sucked for sure. Yeah. So I, I definitely think in redraft leagues, you, you want to try and get this guy to handcuff McCaffrey. Just cover your ass because, you know, you don't want history to repeat itself and you get stuck yeah. without having him. For sure. Um, yeah, because yeah. like you said, we've seen the backup actually come in and step in and take that role. For, for sure, sure yeah. you know. So it's not just CMC's role. It's like that is a role that they have in that in, on that team. Uh, let's go on to the next one here. We got – how do I pronounce this? Jared. Jared Dokes. Jared Dokes. D-O-A-K-S. For audio listeners, um, goes to Miami. What, you, let's let's hear the Dolphins fan. Let's yeah. hear it. So hey. I, I was a little bummed out. I really wanted to get one of those big three running backs, Najee, Etienne, or Javante Williams. I really wanted Javante Williams because there was a lot of reports saying he would fall to the second round, and Miami had two picks in the second round. Um, so Miami is next on the clock. I forget who was on the clock, but Miami was the very next pick. All of a sudden, no, 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 no. Trade comes in. The Broncos trade up. And I'm thinking, like, oh, no no worries. The Broncos have a running back. They have Melvin Gordon. And who do the fucking Broncos take? Javante Williams, right in front of the Dolphins. I was yeah, smart by them. Very, Shitty for you. Very pissed off. I was very angry. Um, so I didn't really know anything about this guy until you actually texted me, and then I started watching some film on him. But you were telling me that for a seventh-round pick, you think this guy is going to be pretty good and have some good value going forward. Yep, I got you right here. Ready? <clears throat> so from this is from his coach. He said – He's an amazing special teams player. Ready ready for the stat? He is a four down back with amazing pass blocking ability. In 130 pass protection opportunities, guess how many sacks he gave up in his college career? I'm going to go with the long shot of zero. One. 
he he's only, he has not dropped a single ball. His his uh senior the last year he played, I don't know what I think he's a senior, didn't drop a single ball and he only allowed one sack his whole college career. He only slipped because he had injury issues. He also had four hundred in receiving yards, four touchdowns. The dude he forced twenty five missed tackles on only hundred and forty four carries, had seventeen runs of ten yards or more. Dude bends 225 19 times. He's not like a speedster, but he's he's at your neck. He ran a 4 5 yeah. 7 40. He's got a good burst. That's yeah. what it is. He had a 39 and a half inch vert, which put him 96 percentile amongst running backs. Had a 120 inch broad jump, put him in 84th. If I just told you these numbers, you would never think he went in the seventh round. Dude, and he landed in a great landing spot. I think give him some time. He, I think he's going to stick on the roster just because he's. This is just like a Terry McLaurin when I called him a special teams wizard. He's one of those guys who's he's gonna make the roster just because he's fucking great and he can play all four downs. Yeah, he's got the size to be a three down back, and early in his career, the best way to see the field is it is special teams. So yeah, Jared Dokes, I think he can find his way. I mean, the first thing I put was great landing spot to earn reps. I mean, look at that catch right there, one handed, full extended, look like look, look like OBJ right there. But um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hyped. I try to get him in a free agency in our league, but it opened at five in the fucking morning and someone picked him up. So yeah, it sucks for me, but yeah, I'm excited for you guys. I think he could, he can do some things. I mean, one thing I can say this as a Dolphins fan, I trust in, in Chris Greer, the GM for the Dolphins. Uh, so for them to not take a running back, I'm pretty bummed out. Like I said, last year we had a bunch of picks this year. We had a bunch of picks, you know, not to get any Dobbins, Jonathan Taylor, CEH, Clyde, o, you know, Aker, Swift, yeah. Akers, yeah, all these guys. And then you have, you know, Najee, Etienne, Javante, like not to get any of those guys, kind of sucks when you have all those draft picks because you're thinking that's what we need to get. But, I mean, last year, Miles Gaskin, a guy who's a former seventh-round pick, Miles Gaskin was solid, especially yeah. in PPR leagues. And he was getting you, you know, 14, 15 points every single game. That's solid. Solid flex with upside. And he got, that guy got drafted in the seventh round. Even Savon Ahmed came in, um, guy who was undrafted, you know, from the Niners, you know, and liked came over. Year. Guy came in and, and produced pretty well. So maybe they just have a knack for finding these late-round guys, uh, and just kind of throwing them in and fitting the system. So, I mean, yeah. you got to think too. For I was looking at the the contract. Savon Ahmed, he's a free agent at the end of the year. Uh, they signed Malcolm Brown to a one year deal. I feel like they okay. just they're just using him as like a what they did Jordan Howard. He might not even make the team. Yeah. Patrick Who knows? Laird. Patrick Laird is going to be non existent. So those three guys won't even be on the team next year. And they have Jordan Scarlett. Jordan Scarlett probably won't even be on the team next year either. Honestly. So the only player that's going to be on the team next year is Dokes and Miles Gaskin. And Miles Gaskin is not the biggest guy. Um, but like I said, this guy, Dokes, good pass protection, good hands, could be three down guy, good strong physical runner. Yeah. So I mean, you could be looking, you know, two three years from now where he is the guy there in yeah. Miami going forward. So yeah, we'll and see what happens. But yeah, not a pr promising prospect for sure. For sure. Nice. And the coach said, I hate to see him leave, and I'm like, well, motherfucker graduated college, he's got to go. You yeah. know, <laughs> he can't just be here forever. So gotta let the motherfucker ride out. Uh, is he yeah, even no. being drafted in redraft leagues? Probably no. Not. No, it I'll, says number four fifty-seven. Yeah, so uh, he's one of those guys. He's like a James Robinson last year that like no one really knew about. We yeah. did, and we're like, yo, he just he's one of those guys. the The path to to reps isn't that hard. It's not like he's got not at all. If Miles Gaskins goes down, I think this guy could step in and be the guy. Because I'm not I'm not worried about Malcolm Brown. No offense yeah. to him. And what I tell people is, whether it's real football or dynasty in, in regards, you have to look at, like, draft equity. So who the fuck is in front of him that they have draft equity on? Nobody. Nobody. It's literally – it's going to be a fucking an open contest once they get to training camp because they're not invested in anybody. Miles Gaskins is a nobody. They didn't get a second, third, fourth, fifth-round guy. These are all guys – Patrick Laird fucking looks like a fullback, for Christ's sakes. Yeah. So I think it's a good – like, a great landing spot. Yeah, don't in be, dynasty, I would definitely be drafting him in a dynasty draft though, because like I said, in two years, three years, he could be like the last man standing in this sense. You know, yeah, it might, I mean, who knows? Maybe Miami next year they go out and get someone in the draft or free agency. But as of today, like I said, he might have one of the easier paths for a guy who got drafted so late to kind of take over the reins yeah. somewhere. And it's only because of injury. If he, if he didn't have an injury, you know, tag next to his name, he's probably a fourth rounder. Yeah, completely different situation, but. The more I was writing stats, I was like, fuck, fuck, damn. <laughs> I was like, this this dude, yeah. god damn it. But I was like, how do you go in the seventh round? And character, I was like, he's got to be issues. So I look, his coach fucking loves him. Yeah. So I was like, damn, looks like one of those guys that, you know, just kind of. Like slipped through the cracks just, just kind of, Yep, just kind of slipped through the cracks well, and, and got hurt. And, you know, I he, was, and he was behind yeah. two NFL guys, too. He was behind Warren, who um, got drafted last year by the Eagles. 
and then one more running back off the top of my head. I Mike, forgot. Mike Boone. Oh, yeah, and Mike Boone. So he's been behind two NFL caliber guys also. So yeah. Cincinnati running back you? I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Okay, uh, let's go on to the next one. Oh, Chet, my we dude, now we take turns. A chuck it out, brother. We're going to talk about a Trey Sermon, brother. Let's do it, huh? This is, uh, he's on the 49ers. Yeah, and that's uh, Dre's favorite team. Um, but T-Rev's going to talk about it like I just like okay. I just did. Sure. Yeah, I was telling you, what does my, my note say right there, the first very first note? Young Andre Navarro, <laughs> a steal, a draft day steal. A draft day steal is what I wrote here. See, the Dolphins could even drafted him, uh, but they did yeah. not. And, um, you know, looking at the film on him, I'm thinking, like, why did we not draft him? I mean, I would have loved to have drafted this guy. And had um, on the dolphin, but I mean, the guys. Way, wait, by the way, uh, if you want to check out the highlights, you can watch it on YouTube with us. Yes, sir. We have him playing. Okay. But I mean, this guy's—he's built like a running back, six foot, two fifteen. Um, one thing I love about him, especially for dynasty leagues, I'd be targeting him in every single dynasty league. I mean, he could be next year the potential starter for the team. You got Mostert, Jeff Wilson, and they just acquired Wayne Goldman. But all three of those guys are in the last year of their contract, so next year going forward, he could be the last man standing and be the starter for the San Francisco 49ers. And I feel like if you're the starter for a Kyle Shanahan offense, you're fantasy relevant and you're going to be successful because that's just how it works. I mean, that guy can literally just plug and play anybody into his offense, and I feel like they do good. Uh, but Trey Sermon, that guy's – he's good. I mean, yeah, the no. guy's elusive. He's tough to tackle. And if you just want to watch some highlights on him, watch the Clemson football game from last oh. year. The guy had 31 rush attempts, 193 rushing yards, and four catches for 60 yards. He, like, single-handedly destroyed Clemson. And I, I think Clemson was undefeated at that time. Yeah. Well, I don't want to say single-handedly because uh, Justin well, Fields threw, like, five, six touchdowns. Yeah. But that, that was, like, I mean, his cutting-out party. Big part, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I actually love this pick for the 49ers, like I said, because all those guys, they could be gone next year. Um, and, you know, you have a guy like him who's as talented as he is, and you have him on a rookie, rookie contract. So, you know, it's cheap for the salary cap. Yep, no, I agree. I mean, <clears throat> I, I kind of wrote him off two years ago when people thought he was going to commit, but instead he went from Oklahoma to Ohio State. And they had, like, Master Teague, if you remember him. He was supposed to be, like, this good running back, and then he ended up sucking, and then Sermon just took over. And then, dude, just little by little, just looking at his film, he's got the size, what is it, 215, two, right? Yeah. And his cuts are stupid. It's almost – almost a flaw because he looks to cut so much but not really like he he's always looking to just make one little cut but he hits the hole though so his yeah, field awareness yeah it's he can really see fucking impressive, everything I feel like. he's like, like he knows run, where everything is he's like making a cut and he's already looking to probably cut again but yeah he's a he went to the niners which everyone knows they love to run the ball shanahan schemes fucking anybody could be a running back over there it seems like so yeah and he's not thrown into a role where he has to play but he's behind two guys that are often hurt. So I think it's it's a good landing spot. I, I'm not mad at it at all. I mean, you, you said it all. Fuck. Yeah, Steel I mean, re sure. redrafts, maybe you're not targeting him. Maybe he ends up on the waiver wire, but just a guy to keep a name on. But in, in dynasty drafts, yeah. uh, I would be all over this guy. And they, and they traded up to get him. Always You always got to look for guys that they trade up to get. Yeah. Where did he go in your guys' dynasty draft? He went – yeah. Trey Sermon went like 210 or 110. That was say the he, first round? Yeah, he was a first rounder, yeah, for sure. I mean, he, like you said, with Dokes, kind of an easy path to be the starter. He's got a very similar path. Like yeah. I said, next year, if all three of those guys are gone because their contracts are up, he and, you know, yeah, he could Sky's be the limit. starting running back for the San Francisco 49ers next year. Yep, 100%. Uh, and he's also going 12th round, but he jumped up. He went, he was from going from late 13th round in redrafts, and now he's early 12 so yeah i mean i wouldn't you know take a late round flyer on a guy like that i mean like dre said mostert you know been banged up and jeff wilson it's kind of just been a guy wayne gallman i'm not really too scared of wayne gallman to be honest with you no, no disrespect to him but no this but guy's the, nice but but yeah. the next guy it's a perfect yeah. transition because the next guy is very interesting. Okay. Very interesting. So we got. Let's go to Elijah Mitchell. So we got Elijah Mitchell out of uh, Louisiana Lafayette, and they actually had a couple guys come out together. But this dude, you want? Th I feel like this is one of those guys where like, you're you're like a coach on like a video game, and you're like, oh. you look at his his uh, like his talent, what he's good at. He weighs two fifteen, two twenty almost, and he ran a four three two forty. 
what? Which is bananas. He's 5'11", 218, and ran a 4'3", 240-yard dash. The thing is with him, he's literally, they say, PFF. I mean, I watched the film. I could see it. But they said uh, he's not really going to outmaneuver you, but he's going to outrun you. So he's not the quickest guy. He's not shifty in space. But this is the epitome of seam, gone. Yeah. Done. You're not catching him. 4'3", 2". Q, Q highlight. <laughs> exactly, right? So with him, Sermon's got way more talent as far as, you know, vision, running back, all that. With him, I think he's going to make the roster also and someone to just look out. This is more in Dynasty. The Niners do not have a kick returner. They don't have a punt returner. They, they don't. He runs a four three two. So I think that's the quickest way for him. Don't be surprised if you see him returning kicks for him, as long as you know. Obviously, he's got to practice, you know, whatever it is, catching the balls, all that bullshit. But I think that'll be his his way to seeing the field. But that speed for that size is not. You can't teach that five eleven two eighteen at four three two forty. Yeah. So with him, I mean, if someone goes down, that's going to be interesting. And the number one stat that I liked, ready for this? After Raheem Moster got hurt, Jeff Wilson was a clear-cut running back on the roster and had 28.8% of running back snap touches. So he was taking, I mean, so he was getting the ball 28.8% of the time that they were running plays after Moster got hurt. So he was like straight bell cow. Yeah. So just like, just like Sermon, I mean, injuries – They'll be battling it out. They took him in the sixth. They took Sermon in the third. So draft equity-wise, they, they obviously are looking for Sermon more. But, I mean, he's got the size to be a bell cow. I mean. Yeah, he's built He's built for tough. Is yeah. that what they say? Yeah, so obviously you can tell he's not that elusive. <laughs> he's built for tough. It's a forward fucking range. So, yeah, I mean, that's, 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 that's what I like with him. I mean, he's obviously has some flaws, and that's, you know, the, the being the shiftiness, elusiveness. He's just – Straight, fast, speed, big guy. But, I mean, Shanahan obviously saw something he liked in him. But something to keep, a, keep an eye out for. More dynasty for sure. But yeah. I think he will take over the kick return job because we don't have anybody that's that fast yeah, or that big. But it kind of alludes back to what I was saying about how those guys, Mostert, Wilson, and, and Gallman, they could all be gone at the end of the year. I think, yeah. you know, when you draft two rookie running backs – and when you have three of them already, in, in a thinking sense, ahead. that means you're kind of thinking, hey, these guys are the future. These guys are just right now. Yeah. And like I said, who knows if Gallman even makes a team. Maybe Jeff Wilson. I like like to believe he makes a team. But who knows? Maybe he doesn't make the team. You know, Maybe they cut, save the cap. Or he gets hurt. Dude, they get hurt like all that. the yeah. time. They're just so, – they Yeah, were... you know, like I said, Trey, Trey Sermon and this guy right here, uh, Elijah Mitchell, these guys could be the future – for the 49ers. And, I, and for me personally, I want every piece of the 49ers backfield I can get. It's kind of yeah. tricky because you don't know who's going to be the guy. But like you said, when you're the guy, you're going to be the guy there. And you're, and you're yeah. going to put up points. Yeah. He's gotten undrafted dudes that just ball. Jeff Wilson was literally an RB2, and he only played like seven weeks. Yeah. I mean, Moser went was like his eighth team by the time, seventh, eighth team by the time he got to the Niners. And now look at him. <laughs> look at him go. Look at him go. Yeah, they were, when they drafted these guys, they were singing that song. The times they are a changing. Okay, uh, this is the last one, right? This is the yep. last one. The last one for the rookie running backs. You just went over ten of them for you guys. You know, make it quick, make it. Uh, Man, this dude. Ten important guys. But so, can I just say something here? So wait, I was this looking is at Jibane, it. Oh, wait, what's his name? How do you say? Javian. Thank you, Javian Hawkins. Javian Hawkins. So I was looking at Javian Hawkins here, and I was looking at his stats, and it said that he was five nine one ninety five. And all I have to say is, it's like Mike said. What, you know, if you listening, Google it's Javian Hawkins. If you're watching, just look at the highlights. If this guy is five nine one ninety five, then I'm six five five hundred pounds. Oh no! Hey, they 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 recanted. Hey, guess what? He weighed in at his pro day. He weighed. There is no way. He, he weighed. <laughs> hey, he weighed one hundred and eighty two pounds. One eighty one. So yeah, they were tripping. This fool is like five five one eighty. Yeah, he's he's five eight. Yeah, we he's were, five. Before we started recording, Tyler showed me the highlights, and they're like, bro. Look at what they're telling me, telling us that this guy's size is, and I like I took one look at it. I was like, yeah, that's like he's like, what do you think? I'm like, like yeah, smaller, that's not. He's like smaller than the refs. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, yeah, so <laughs> for sure. The, and the that's fucking his, the guy who holds the the, the first down the flag guard. is yeah, the chain guard guy is bigger than him. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Javian Hawkins, they actually call him they call him Juke Stick. They call him PlayStation. That's like a nickname they call him because he's so shifty. He just shake. I, Shakes people out of their shoes. Yeah, he's, sh he's shaking the yeah. height and weight. I see. I mean, I, bio. I call him Whoppers with cheese, but yeah. So, I mean, he's a straight, just a home run threat. I mean, uh, in 2020, he had touchdown runs of 75, 70, and 90. He is more of a, as you can tell, I mean, by size. He's obviously a zone 
a zone runner running to the outside. Yeah. But he's shifty. He runs bigger than his size, but he's not 190, whatever. He weighs 181, 182, which is his number one weakness looking at PFF. Thin frame, not ideal for bundles of carries as a, as a pro. So, I mean, but if you have eyeballs, you can obviously tell. Dude's yeah. not going to get the ball 30 times a game and run dives, you know. But he went to a great spot. All he has to do is beat out fucking Cordero Patterson and Mike Williams – or Mike Davis. Mike Davis did have a good year, but they signed him to a – what is it? A, it's a two-year, but – I mean, Mike Davis is going to be the guy there. No, no, for sure he is, but I'm confident he could beat out Cordero Patterson. He's not even a goddamn running back. So, well, I was going to say this guy would be good for, like, punt and kick returns, but I, w- I didn't even know they had Cordero Patterson, to be honest with you, and that guy is, like, the, the ultimate – Kick, kick, return. kick returner. Yeah, yeah. Know? So he's just at a running back. I think with him, his size, obviously. So if he can put on a little bit of weight, we've seen guys that are smaller than him do well. So it's not all that, but it's just a matter of kind of, you know, scheming him, getting him the ball, getting him open. He, I mean, at, for being undrafted to go to the Falcons, see, I thought Kenny Gainwell to the Bills or the Falcons would have been beautiful. But they decided to not take a running back and then go with him. So they obviously, you know, they see something they like. Dude, dude just finds the end zone though. I mean, look, he is fast. He's he's, fast. he's really fast. He's just not very big. He's just not very. But big. isn't that? But isn't that interesting? Like he ran. So he, um, he he's very fast. But he did. It says he ran a four four five. And then yeah. we got guys who were like two twenty that way <laughs> that ran it faster. Than yeah. That. So I'm, it's probably game speed for him. He almost looks like Donnell Pumphrey. That is him? something that people yeah. don't talk about. It's yeah, because but, his legs are so short, Mike. So he's yeah. That's what it is. If he had longer legs, he'd be quicker. <laughs> It's it really does like I know you think I'm joking, but I do think I do believe it gives you an advantage if you can go. That fool's legs are take, way shorter than yours, and that fool is dusting you in a race. Oh, dusting. yeah, right, he's dusting. Dude. So that yeah, with guy him, is smoking you in a race. Yeah. that guy's probably beating that guy's beating me in a race. He's and I'm yeah. Dude, I'll than smoke you. a cigarette while running against him, and I'll beat him. No, you mean you'll smoke a cigarette while losing a race? No, <laughs> no, but with him, I mean, I whoop that ass. I think. Mike Mike Davis did show that ability to catch out of the backfield. He's more, like I said, small, dynasty, more than redraft. He's probably not going to even get looked at. But just someone to keep an eye out if you're if you're have yet to do your dynasty draft. He's more like I think I took him in the third. No, I took him in the fourth round. Yeah, he was you know he's my last pick. I was like whatever, running backs are. But I should have taken Dokes. Yeah, no jokes. Dokes. But hey, it's all good. Hey, learn from my mistake. Take dokes, no jokes. Yeah, uh, that's it. I mean, yeah. Fuck. Is there any anything you guys want? To... Oh, I do want to throw an honorable mention. Actually, my bad. Okay, yeah. I forgot Kylan Hill from the Packers, Mississippi State. Another guy like Chubba Hubbard who um, really hurt his stock by sitting out. Um, him and Mike Leach really didn't get along too well. But if Kylan Hill would have come out last year, he would have been a second or third round pick at the worst. He went sixth. He went to the Packers. But, dude, he reminds me of DeMarco Murray. Go look at his film. He could catch. He's a, he runs a little bit, you know, not low center, gravity, gravity a little taller. But, dude, dude's a – he has character. So he's one of those guys, like, off the field. But his talent – We all do. But his talent is fucking undeniable. Like, I would have – he like I said, dynasty-wise, he probably was a top 20 pick last year. Yeah. And he decided to come back and fuck up, didn't play. Or he – he's one of those guys who, like, opted out, played, and then opted back out. Kind of like him. He, he – Opted out, played, and then after like four or five games, I think he opted out. He opted out again, yeah. But it's probably because he weighs 190 pounds, and he's like, "I'm gaining too much weight. I need to chill." <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, Kylan Hill, another guy, honorable mention who could, yeah, especially with Aaron Jones. I mean, how many years did they do? Four. Four, yeah. Four. So got AJ Dillon and AJ Dillon, yeah. So that's big boy, big boy. He big boy. Big boy he, boy. uh yeah. Oh. Ooh, I thought he was gonna get murdered right there. AJ but, yeah. Dillon could work security, doing for like Beyonce if he really wanted to. Yeah. Oh, those quads, but yeah, I mean that's it for sure. Yeah, so these are just the rookie running backs coming in, just some names to kind of keep an eye on. You know, like Dre said, a lot of these guys, if you're in a dynasty draft, you want to be targeting them, and then you know a good chunk of these guys are in redrafts as well. You want to be targeting them because oh, yeah. you know these guys could be you know the next James Robinson in a sense, a guy who goes undrafted, not only in the NFL but in real. In your fantasy leagues, and guy who comes out is a stud. So that would be dokes if I had to pick. Yeah, but yeah, this week we did running back. So next week we're gonna go over the wide receivers. Like Dre said, that the receiver depth is even it's more be... than it was last year, and there's some good receivers. Oh yeah, last year I already have a couple guys at the top of my 
my head that I want to talk about, you know, specifically. Uh, but when we get there, we get there. So, yeah. Uh, if you got any questions, hit us up. Like Mike said, the Patreon's up there. Use the AVG token to, to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't worry about my crypt coin. That sucked. Any uh, any links, if you want to reach out, ask us questions and stuff like that. That's all we in the description you. down below. Yep. Um, I have timestamps, too, down below if you want to navigate through the episode a little quicker. Yeah. It's helpful. Uh, yeah. Season so, one, boy. I mean, season, season four, four, episode one. Hey, yeah, let's we're get out it. Here. Hey, it's last year was kind of a wash, you know. Towards, it wasn't. Towards the end of the season, it was. What are you but, talking about? Just the season. Just this whole year was a wash. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, COVID, yeah. Doug. COVID, it's COVID right. is over. over. <laughs> yeah, we're ready, though. And so was this episode. Thanks for listening. Subscribe, like, share it. Send it to your mom on Facebook. Maybe she'll uh, like us little boys and hit us up, maybe. Him and his little boys still, huh? Oh, yeah, I forget. Different uh, season, same little boys. <laughs> but anyways, thanks for listening. This has been the AVG Fantasy Football Podcast Season 4. And us big boys are out. <laughs>